Hello, good day, beloved in Christ. Greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, today, there is a question I really want us to answer, and this question have been people have been asking this question for ages, and today the question is still being asked. And what is the question all about? The question is this: When is Jesus Christ coming again? Is Jesus Christ still coming back again? Certainly, I know your answer would be yes, because you believe in his word, that he is going to come again as he said. But when is he going to come again? Some people have argued, and some people have relented by saying that even when Jesus Christ was leaving this earth, after his resurrection, about 2,000 and some years ago, and he said to his disciples, I am coming back quickly. And now 2,000 years has passed. Is it not time for him to come back? Is it not time for him to come, as he said, quickly? So many people are troubled. But there is nothing like a mystery in the way that Jesus Christ spoke to us that I am coming again. Well, this is what I mean. Jesus Christ told us when he will come again. Yes, he told us when he will come again. Are you surprised about that? I discovered this when I stopped reading my hymn books and start reading my Bible. So when you stop reading your hymn books, when you stop reading your Facebook post always and start reading your Bible, you will discover a lot of hidden truths about the Word of God. There is no mystery about the coming of Jesus Christ. He told us when the exact you know, period he is going to come. But he did not tell us the hour. It is only the hour, he said, no man knows the hour. But for the period, for the time he is going to come, he told us, if you want to know, turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 24. And let us read. We are going to read this in context. We are not just going to pick one verse of the Bible. Let us read what really happened, what made Jesus to, you know, speak those words that is written down in the Gospel of Matthew. So let us go to Matthew chapter 24. We are going to read from verse 3 down, because from that verse 3 was when the disciples came and asked him this question we are asking ourselves today. When are you going to come back again? What would be the sign of your second coming? Now I read from verse 3 of Matthew chapter 24. He said, And Jesus Christ, sorry, say, and as he sat upon the mouth of olives, the disciples came unto him privately. Mark the word. Jesus Christ did not speak to the public about his second coming as such. So it was a private discussion with his family, with his disciples, the people in the inner caucus, that is, the, the people in the inner circle. He discussed this with them. So I'm reading from verse 3. Say, as Jesus Christ sat Upon the mouth of olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall be the things be, and what shall be the sign of thy second coming and of the end of the age. And Jesus Christ answered and said unto them, from verse 4, mark this word. And Jesus Christ answered and said unto them, He did not tell them this is a mystery, no one knows. He answered and said unto them, Look at the first response he gave them in regards to this question. Take heed that no man deceives you. <laughs> Take heed that no man deceives you. From verse 5, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you know the meaning of Christ. Christ means Savior. Jesus Christ in this verse 5 of chapter 24 of the Gospel of Matthew was prophesying about the rise of religion. See, many people will come and say, I am the Savior, which is Christ. He was talking about the Islam, the Hindu, the, you know, the Buddhist, the Scientologists. He said, these people will come. They will say, I have a final word. I am the Savior. You can be saved through me. So he was prophesying about the rise of religion. Now, look at from verse 6. I want you to get the concept on how Jesus Christ spoke to his disciples in here. 
from that verse he say and you shall hear of the rumors of war see that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet i know that maybe your pastors have told you that the sign of the end time is earthquake rumors of war this and that but jesus christ is saying do not be troubled for all these things eh, are not the signs of the end of time you will hear the rumors of war you will hear about biological weapons you will hear about troubles everywhere but jesus christ is saying all this thing must come to pass but but what the end is not yet so these things are not the signs of the end time now let us continue to read say for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom they shall be they shall be famines there shall be pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are just the beginning of sorrows. Now, I continue. It says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall be killed. They shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. He is now prophesying about the persecutions that, we, that is going to take place in the last days. From verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax old. But he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. The rise of false prophets, earthquakes, all these things are not the sign of the end time. Now, let us go to verse 14. That is when he told us when the end is. He says in verse 14, and this gospel, and this gospel, not that, not any other gospel, and this gospel, he is specifying of one particular gospel. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto nations, and then shall the end come. When the gospel of the kingdom of God will be preached, to all nations and look at the all nations that the bible is referring here hmm? when in greek word it is called ethnos ethnos is not just like a race a particular race like it is not like a nation like it no 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 there are more to ethnos than this you know ethnos is like um, a group of people that has ideology that speaks the same one mind the same vision that have the same, you know, the same thing in common. For example, medicine is an ethnos. Law is an ethnos. So these are ethnos that Jesus Christ was present. He, he was saying that this gospel must be preached as a witness. In other words, they are going to demonstrate it. They are going to come into the language of law and they will confirm that Jesus Christ is the Lord, that Jesus Christ is the judge, not them themselves. They will come into the into the language of medicine they will understand that jesus christ is the healer that he is the king that he is the ultimate that they are some things that their own personal medicine cannot cure they will now rely on jesus in law we shall rely on him in in our educational system we will understand that our education is unable to solve the problem of the world that we need jesus in this particular field when all this thing is done when everybody have accepted the gospel of the kingdom now the end shall come because everything have put in place now that is not just the final word he said when you when you read down the disciples also ask him the same question in this same Matthew chapter 24 now he also told them that no one knows the hour the moment that the son of man would come he also told them, and that is what I want to explain to you about the Ark of Noah, that the coming of the Son of Man shall be like the time of Noah. I want to explain to you what really happens in the day of Noah, because so many people don't understand what really takes place. God spoke to Noah and said, I am going to use water to destroy the earth, but I need your cooperation. I need a man's cooperation. So you, you, you got to cooperate with me. You have to build an ark. 
and tell people that I'm going to destroy the world, that they should go into the ark. That anyone that goes into the ark shall be saved. But now, here is the covenant. God spoke to Noah and said, Anytime you finish building this ark, the rain will start falling. Now, from the very first day that God spoke to Noah, I tell you, the rain has started falling in the rain. The rain has started falling. But for the rain to fall on earth and destroy the world, it is in the hand of Noah. Because God has covenanted with him that the day you finish this act, the rain will fall. I tell you, if peradventure Noah is still building the act till today, the rain will not have you know, started falling. Because that is the covenant. Anytime you finish building this boat, this ark, the rain will fall. Now, God is the one that sent for the rain, but the time the rain, you know, fell, the time the rain started falling on earth was in the hand of Noah. And today, the coming of Jesus Christ is in the hand of God. It is in the hand of the king. But when he will establish his kingdom on earth, when he will come on earth, depends on what you preach. When you preach the gospel of the kingdom to the nations, and what is the importance of the gospel of the kingdom? Why is it that we, we should pray for the kingdom? Why is it that we should pray and preach and talk about this kingdom? Because Jesus Christ came for a kingdom. His first public statement in Matthew chapter 4 verse 17, he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You know, repent is change your mind that the kingdom of God is at hand. It's at hand means it has arrived. Now, Matthew 6 verse 33, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything shall be added unto you. And in Matthew 6 from verse 9, when he was teaching them, and in Luke chapter 11 as well, when he was teaching us how to pray, he said we should pray that let his kingdom come on earth. And Isaiah prophesied and said when there will be new heaven and new earth, that there will not be death, that there will not be mourning. Now the importance of the kingdom of God is this, that if you are a believer, Every day you pray for protection, you pray for deliverance, you pray for this, you pray for, you pray for a lot of things. But when this gospel will come, you don't need to pray for all those things because in a kingdom, the king shall protect his citizens. So this is all about his second coming. Thank you for having time to watch this video. See you in my next video.